have you ever seen the flounder no is that a uh the sequel about the mcfish sandwich no it's the pete we're doing a podcast here. <laughs> brunch hit it boys We got trouble in the television streets. No one wants to kiss anymore. I want to kiss. It's Valentine's Day. Do you want a kiss or do you want a... Uh, what else does Hershey's make? Uh, People still doing Hershey's kisses? <laughs> I'll tell you who isn't. Uh, you star uh, Penn Badgley. 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 Because, Badgley. <laughs> yeah, it's like seasons five through seven of Glee. Early on, that's good shit. That's cutting edge. That has uh, Michael Malley. Glee? I never watched Glee. Anything I never that has Glee. Anything that has Michael Malley, though, is I'm, I'm all aboard. So you like... Uh, uh, yes, dear? Yes, I did. No, you like... Global the, Guts? Yeah, I did. The, uh, the Rick? I don't know that one. You don't know The Rick? No. The Rick was a... I believe it was like an ESPN uh, ad campaign. Oh, I do. I do remember that. It was Where kind he, of. He had it, like he was like in, a, in his like a uh, like childhood basement or whatever it was, like a man cave. It was your cousin from yeah. Boston levels of creativity. Yes, uh, but I, I I remember there was one. Where something about him yelling at golf events. <laughs> He's like, I like when uh, golfers teeing off to yell, "Send the hole." <laughs> Nobody has made like a career of just being like a guy's a, guy. A, yeah, like a an everyman than Michael yeah. Malley. Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah, but like he is he's good. Not to say that Michael Malley's not good, but like Jimmy Kimmel f- fits in his role. Well, you star Penn Badgley has been praised for quote shading his bosses at Netflix after he called out the controversial Jeffrey Dahmer series. This is the wrong article about this guy. Is this guy just saying a bunch of stuff? Uh, I no. I mean, like the the thing that I saw recently was that he he requested to not have any sex. That's what I was looking in new, for in the new season of You because he, uh, from what I recall, like wanted to be faithful to his partner. Yes, that's in all, real life. Well, then why are all the stories okay? Here we go. The, the, the like the the top twenty stories about this guy right now are about how he shaded netflix okay all right well he says that sexing scenes are uh, disturbing to him and that i'd read this story anyway so i won't try to find an article he said to the showrunner yo i don't want to do any love scenes in fact if you cut out any of the romantic stuff I don't want that on there, even though he's the star of the show. Correct. And it's like a show about like being desperate for romance and like being psychotically attached to romantic relationships. Well, people who are, I find, desperate and psychotically like obsessed with romance and stuff typically don't experience much of it. So why don't they just have his character be more obsessed with romance? Then you definitely won't get any of it. Yeah, so you're saying like the people who are mo- the most obsessed with romance are usually like the people not having sex? He's, yeah, he's, the, the people, this is, I'm not generalizing, but a lot of times in film and stuff, people are like, oh, if I could only just find the one, I'd sweep her up. It's like, cool, no one's going to date you at all, <laughs> yeah, ever. You because you're, you're, you're thinking really weird. Red flags, and, yeah. yeah. You're, I, th- there's a, you're projecting your fantasies on everybody else. Yeah, oh my God, yeah. And then stupid Michael Bublé, I just haven't met you yet. Get out of here. Uh, rip off Love Song by Sarah Burrells <laughs> Moore. But, uh, he said this, and then a lot of people were like, yeah, good for you. All right. And I'm like, okay, well, that's kind of weird. I, I I, mean, like, I understand having, like, boundaries for your, uh, your like, in real life relationship. And you're, you're like, okay, this makes my partner uncomfortable. This makes me uncomfortable. I'm not going to do this anymore. Uh, but I wouldn't necessarily, like, be like, yes, he's doing the right thing. He's just not doing his job. Right, and he did sign a contract, and I think right. he acknowledged that he's like, I signed on to do this. So if they said no, then whatever. But and I think, he did it for three seasons. I think the showrunner was like, "Whoa, you are one brave guy. <laughs> you got it." And then there was this tweet that uh, supplemented the conversation uh, from uh, Charlotte Laws. I'm not calling this person out, but I'm just uh, citing the material. 
Uh, more unpopular opinion, I don't like to see people kissing on the lips in TV shows or movies unless I know the actors are dating or married. I get a gag reflex. And yes, I have embraced my inner prude. Ha. Well, that I mean, I'm not going to get on people who have like if, if he's like hey i don't want to kiss people on the show then whatever that's his thing if a person is like hey i feel weird watching people kiss on tv whatever that's their thing i think that if, you if you're weird going to watching po- people kiss on tv like that's a you thing well, yeah, that you yeah, need no, to figure for, out. For, for sure but i'm not gonna like i'm not sending anybody to, to jail for it but i think that it will be hard if we start portraying people living their lives and don't include romance in kissing i would i'll tell you what though like you get rid of sex scenes I, you, no. just, you, you, you want to just like wipe out sex scenes no that's fine it, no it's like it, if you wanted to do like, like they're kissing and like they, they begin to disrobe and then you cut to <laughs> like their uh I, I watched a James Bond movie recently, uh, and then like you cut to one of them, and it's like, "Ooh, James, I didn't." Uh, so you still sleeping with a gun under your pillow? Blow. You want to do that shit? Then whatever, cool. I'm typically not watching movies to see people have fake sex. But yeah, so if you yeah, want to do that, but like, whatever. But I, I don't like. I don't necessarily like need it from every movie that I watch. But saying that like it, it shouldn't be included. That's like. Uh, film and TV shouldn't in- involve murder or shouldn't involve right. crime. Like, if kissing makes you more uncomfortable than watching, like, Law & Order SVU, then th- maybe you have to, like, readjust what makes you uncomfortable. Yeah, well, th- yeah, for sure. Keep all those clubs in your bag. And I definitely agree. I mean, th- that's the way that people are with, like, this character was a really bad guy. He said this to his partner or whatever. It's like, right. And did you, he shot like five people <laughs> yeah. in the episode too. I think the shooting thing was really And I bad. also I'd also don't like doing the like uh, I don't like seeing people kiss if unless they're I know that they're in a, like a relationship in real life. I don't it makes me uncomfortable when they have partners. Listen, that is their job. They're acting. I, I don't like seeing people kiss when they are together. Yeah, that's fair. When they are married. <laughs> that's I, fair. I would I don't want to see uh, two married people kissing each other. I don't want to see two people who've been dating a long time kissing each other. Get that shit out of my face. But if you give me, but it's different on TV. It's different yeah. on TV because like you're not there. Then they they don't like feel you watching them, even though they're making a movie to be watched. I'll tell you what. If I'm watching a movie, I would rather see Allison Brie kiss John Hamm than kiss Dave Franco. Why? Because it's John Hamm. No, just like I, I just like I, hey, quit kissing your husband, will you? <laughs> yeah, it's like start you acting. So you do this enough at home, you freaks? Yeah, it's true. And I know there would be people who'd be like, "Oh my god, isn't that couple everything?" And all that stuff. Also, <laughs> it'd be crazy if Allison Brie kissed John Hamm because she's Trudy Campbell and he's Don Draper. Mm. That would be a total Don Draper move. Pete hasn't seen Mad Men. I'm not. It'd be a total Don Draper move. To kiss Trudy Campbell. I think people should kiss. Get out there. I Get they, horny. It's Valentine's Day. I think they should only kiss. Slop it up. I think they should only kiss if they are acting. <laughs> I only want to see people kiss if they are acting and that person is not their partner. If you're going to do something like, hey, I wrote this thing with my partner, blah, blah. I was like, cool. Well, then you got to play different characters because you're not kissing each other. Got to kiss have this person kiss somebody else i mean chances are if i'm if i'm if it seems like i like you i'm acting so Mm. i could do it you know a movie i watched recently was sideways Mm -hmm. and (laughs) you you don't say and uh yeah i uh i it got got my wheel spinning but uh when the virginia madsen character says to paul giamatti like do you know the sort of stuff that by uh, Thomas Hayden Church's character said to uh, Sandra O's character, and he says, he's an actor, so it can't be good. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, actors must really whip up some some bullshit. Some real creativity. When they're on the prowl. Yeah. It turns out that he just kept telling her that he loved her. That's the scene where Thomas Hayden Church gets his ass kicked is fantastic. It's, I mean, he has had it come in the entire movie. <laughs> oh, Yeah. What a picture! I've never it's, seen it before. It's very good. I I, s- I watched it. Um, I watched it like I want to say like three years ago, and it's one of those movies that you definitely appreciate as you're older. 
Mm. Like, I remember when I was younger, people were going crazy over it. And I was like, this seems like a very pretentious, annoying movie. And then you get older and you're like, oh, yeah, this is. This it's is a very adult movie. Nose. Yeah. I checked like 20 minutes into the movie. I hit pause and I checked to see how old these characters were playing because I was like, if they are, if these characters are supposed to be my age, I will simply die. On I would the spot. say Thomas Hayden Church. They're playing like mid 40s. Like, okay. I was going to say like. He was like thirty eight to forty two. Oh no, yeah, they, they were they were playing like mid forties. Right. Great, great movie. Giamatti, awesome. Everybody in that movie, awesome. It's technically like his bachelor party, right? Or no? Yes, it's okay. they, they. He does like a buddies trip, yeah. just with uh, his just with just with Paul his Giamatti. boy Paul Giamatti. But they did everything in that movie is just perfect. So I was uh, talking to one of my pals. I was talking about Rounders and. Uh, he was saying Rounders and Sideways are like the two movies that he can always go to and be blown away. Hmm. And then that started a cover. I was like, what's Sideways? He was like, it's Paul Giamatti's Finest Hour. It is. And I said, really? Because I saw him play Dr. Eugene Landy in the Brian Wilson biopic, <laughs> and he was really good in that. He smacked a uh, hamburger out of his hands. You ever seen Liar Liar? That's a close second in my book. No, that's a big fat liar. Big fat liar. Yeah, that's right. Liar, liar is the Jim Carrey one. Although I could put, I have the technology. I could put <laughs> Paul Giamatti in Liar, Liar. He'll who who should Paul Giamatti play in Liar, Liar? Uh, oh, you know what you should do. You should take him wearing the Einstein out, uh, the Einstein from the Verizon commercial. Yep. And the scene where uh, where uh, Jim Carrey like is ripping his hair out yeah. in the in the courtroom scene. That 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 should be it. You know what Liar Liar has? It's got really good outtakes. I would imagine so. I mean, even just from the scene of him in the bathroom beating the shit out of himself. That was the heyday. <laughs> Mid nineties was the heyday of outtakes during the credits. So good. The, and the best one was uh he was doing uh in he's talking to Mrs. Cole on the bench. He has this piece of paper and he says, Mrs. Cole. And he just crumples up the piece of paper, like screws around with it and then goes, a goose. <laughs> and it, uh, Pete, I swear to God, he'd made a goose out of this piece of paper. It was fantastic. Speaking of geese, get on that brunch Patreon, patreon.com slash listen to brunch, because this week begins our Oscars dominance. We got the Oscars mini episodes coming out this week. I believe today, Wednesday, we will drop All Quiet on the Western Front. And of course, Geese factor heavily into that film. Uh, we've already got that one. We, we did that, that. That's in the can. And we're also going to have Elvis and Tar coming this week. But if you're new to the podcast or if you've not done the Oscars mini podcast thing before, this is where, and I don't say this literally, but this is where we really make our money. This is where we... we it, you could say it literally if you subscribe to the Patreon. Like yeah. it's, it's, it's really entirely in your hands whether it's, we make this money or not. It's less... It's, it's a, a part of brunch that... Uh, we don't always get to do where we're just leaning into being nerdy and we're not making as many jokes. We're not, there's not as much dicking around. There is a hard 10 to 15 minute plan that is executed brilliantly. And there's information, there's yeah. graphics on the screen. I always recommend watch these on YouTube instead of it, they work in podcast form, but the supplemental elements with the YouTube thing works. And I know that, uh, I, watching these, I've been told by multiple people, is a uh, popular couples activity. It's yeah, because I think the couples uh, wanna wanna like be informed when they go into the Oscars because they're gonna watch together, mm -hmm. and a lot of people just don't want to watch all the movies. So if you've got like a little background on all the movies, then it's a it's like a little spark notes way to get into the Academy Awards. It's also, I mean, like you you said it, and it's like a weird way to pitch it, but it is like essentially the antithesis of brunch where it's like we're focused on something we're very passionate about like something that we care about it's informational and we take ourselves kind of seriously when it comes to the the oscars podcast so uh it's one of my favorite times of year i i, I this is probably like the number one thing that i love doing when it comes to brunch and i look forward to every year so uh very exciting 
would love it if as many people as possible would uh, subscribe to the Patreon, watch these. Um, they will eventually be available to everybody, I think, in like the days, the final days leading up to the Academy Awards. But if you want to get a head start on them early, you want to support the podcast, you want to get us uh, more excited mm. about about doing this kind of stuff. And these take a lot of work, so it's 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 a good little uh, give and take if uh, you hop on the old the old Patreon. So for it's patreon.com slash listen to brunch and also if you want to please subscribe to our youtube channel uh Mm. because we're we're trying to build up the youtube stuff video stuff so uh youtube.com slash listen to brunch also a word from one of our sponsors here today uh for most of us learning a second language in high school or college wasn't exactly a high point in our academic careers i took uh like four or five years of spanish couldn't tell you a single thing that I learned. That's not true. I mean, I know very little Spanish. We learned in the All Quiet on the Western Front mini episode, Pete knows as little French as somebody could know. Exactly. I mean, I barely know English. So asking me to to understand a second language is just asking way too much of me. Let the record, Pete is better at English than the average person his age. Let the record reflect. Well, I think maybe I think you're maybe. like uh, of yeah, people okay, younger fair. than me. I'm like I've seen my friends' if, text messages. Yeah. If everyone's your level, okay, fine. The the world's moving in the right direction. It's fair, okay. Uh, now, thanks to Babbel, the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions. We're close behind on Patreon, by the way. So uh, watch your watch your heels, Babbel. There's an addictively fun and easy way to learn a new language on Babbel, whether you're traveling abroad, connecting in a deeper way with family, or you just have some free time and want to learn another language. Babbel teaches bite-sized language lessons that you'll actually use in the real world. I would definitely get into that. I don't know if I would get, go back to Spanish, it, like, what would you choose if you had to get French? Get, I, when French? I was covering hockey, all uh, every year yeah. I was like, this summer I'll I'll relearn French because I I did French through middle school and then high school and college I did Spanish. But yeah. French French was there would probably be the most app it would be the most applicable yeah. second language for me being in hockey. Uh, Babbel's fifteen minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a new language on the go. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel lessons were created by over 100 language experts. They're not leveraging AI tools. Uh, Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective. With Babbel, you can choose from 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Uh, Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you improve your pronunciation and accent. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stores, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months free. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to Babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L dot com and use promo code BRUNCH. That's B-A-B-B-E-L dot com code BRUNCH. Boy, that all quiet on the Western Front. What a picture, though, huh? Yeah, I mean, that that movie is awesome. And I believe that... So I watched it um, a couple months ago, and just like a random thing that I did during the day, and I was, wasn't expecting a whole lot because this was before uh, the Oscar noms had come out, but... It, I had heard that it was good. I was just like, it was all quiet on the Western Front. Like, how can I get excited about this? It's been around fucking forever. Uh, but it really did blow me away. And I think that, like, as I was watching it, I texted you and I was like, yo, this movie fucking rocks. It's it's terrific, terrific. As good a, a war movie as has uh, come out recently. Uh, another movie that's coming out. You hear about this uh, uh, ship? I did. Yeah, the sequel to Plane, a movie that famously mm-hmm. we quite enjoyed. We yeah, quite I loved we quite rated. Loved Plane. I wouldn't say that I loved it. I thought that it was stupid, but it was I I want more movies. You can love stupid things. Yes, correct. And I uh, so I think that was my like official review on People it People listen like, to Antihero. <laughs> fair. Um 
<laughs> that's just a fucking out that's of like nowhere that's shot. Stupid as, no, it's the stupidest song in the world. It's very stupid, correct. Yeah. Uh, sometimes everybody's a sexy baby. That's uh, No, <laughs> dude, let the record reflect. That's the only good lyric of the song. <laughs> um, no, like, uh, Plane is a dumb, pretty bad movie that I liked. Mm. And I think that more dumb action movies should exist. Like, it, it, it's sort of like Ambulance. Yeah. Ambulance was a like a early aughts action movie where like wow this is so stupid but it's so fun mm. uh plane was sort of like that and i said in our review of plane i want more movies like plane so i can't be mad about us about us getting a sequel especially when they really lean into the stupid name and they just call it ship i mean it's it's following the speed thing correct where yeah. speed initially was on a bus and they say oh boy it's time for uh, cruise control. That's let's let's put him on a ship. Uh, but this, I don't know if this involves Gerard Butler. I would imagine it wouldn't. Uh, yeah. It would probably have to involve a guy who drives a ship. Do you know who it's centered around? Captain Phillips. No, although Captain that's Phillips essentially was on ship. the other day. Captain Phillips was on the other day. Isn't that just like if you were to take plane and put it on a ship? Wouldn't it just be Captain Phillips? No, because uh, oh shit. What's this guy's? What's uh, Gerard Butler's name in this? Let's uh, see, Gerard Butler Plane. I re- mm. it, it was a good name, yeah. Brody Torrance. Brody Torrance, Captain yeah. Torrance. Every every character, as pointed out by our friend Vince Mancini, who I think is like entering the brunch universe. Good. Like, even if it's not not really something that he he's like actively doing, he's good. been liking a lot of our dumb tweets. So, yeah, I have no shout out that. Vince Mancini in the Brunchiverse. Yeah, um, gay room podcast. He, he does have his own. Yeah, um, good. no, uh, uh, he he pointed out that like every character in Plane is named after somebody from like a town in California or a city in California. Ah, it's like Torrance, fucking like just a bunch of different shit. What's uh, uh our guy's name? The president. Oh, Tony Goldwyn. Tony Goldwyn. Yeah, what was his character's name? Let's let, let's just get the full blown <laughs> cast of Plane. I think we we were circling around it. Though. Oh, his name is uh, Scarsdale. Yeah, that's right. There you go. Wow. So the characters are uh, David Scarsdale. Yeah, there's one character named Katie. What's that about? <laughs> Bonnie Lane. I don't know if this is entirely like Mike Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, but. The difference between Captain Phillips and Captain Torrance is... Do you really not know? No. Unlike what that bitch that's crying the whole time is like, Oh, what do you not know how to fly a plane? The plane broke, you fucking loser. The plane broke. Uh, Torrance is a good captain. Captain Phillips was being a dipshit. Oh, that's true. They did tell... They told him, like... uh they were like, don't, don't go, go there. Yeah. yeah. They said, don't go. The, hey, you, you got to be uh, this far <laughs> from shore. And Captain Phillips was like, I don't take no guff from nobody. <laughs> I don't know if we're allowed to or supposed to make fun of Captain Phillips. But he it's got that. done. He got, uh, according to uh, his crew, he was largely responsible for that mess. But, I mean... Didn't they say... Uh, th- and then he saved them and stuff. Yeah, but, but didn't they say that like they, they let Gerard Butler's character, Brody... We're talking about no- Captain Phillips now, Pete. I know, but, I'm, but, I'm, I'm, but Brody Torrance knew that there was a storm that he was flying through. Yes. And then it got hit by lightning. But he objected... And True. If you remember the movie Plane, the guy that the guy that they all drag. Oh my god, the guy in the boardroom who gets fucking bodied. The roast of that guy. And Tony Goldwyn fucking hammered this guy. I think he called him a meteorologist at one point. Yeah, he's like, "Oh, it's everybody. Oh, it's America's sweetheart. He's gonna give us a buzz. Oh, he gonna tell <laughs> give us, us the more weather, weather, weatherman." <laughs> yeah. Oh man, they that guy gets crushed. Not as badly as um. As the plane does, though, because the plane gets struck by lightning. The guy that is... Uh, Spoiler, though. It doesn't get crushed that bad because it takes off again. But it's... Uh, what I like about this movie... This hap- I, I, I was thinking this when I saw um, The Green Inferno. There was a plane crash in that movie. Mm-hmm. And once they crash, they have the, the crash landing. And because I'd seen plane, I was like, everybody better get, get off that plane. It's a hot plane. You know about this now because of that movie? No. You got to get it's 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 a hot plane. You got to get off. Maybe it blows up. It's your planes just blow up when they get hot? I think so. It's a hot plane. Is that why when you when you do air travel it's always so cold inside the cabin? 
Sure, you I don't know. You don't want a hot, you don't want a hot plane. I, I just know that as as hot things that you don't want go, it is right. A plane is right there with a potato. Okay, you want to pass that hot plane to somebody else. You don't want it. Maybe it it blows up. Okay. What happens in the green inferno? Don't is, like this conversation when I'm getting on a plane in two days. And th- I'm gonna be like, is anybody else hot in here? Well, it's a hot get, plane. No, as long as you get off it once it's hot. <laughs> Once it lands, you drop it like it's hot. When it lands, you should be the person that stands up right away, and they're like, "Sir, you're in row blah blah." Just be like, "We gotta get off the plane. It's hot." Yeah. So for everybody shaming, uh, shaming aisle cutters and line cutters uh, in planes, don't because they're just they're they're aware that you got to get off a hot plane. All right, I have googled hot plane. It says people also ask. What does it mean when a plane is hot? Let's see. When a plane changes from using onboard cooling system, blah, 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 a body heat on a full plane can blow up. Okay, I don't care about that. Uh, American airline passengers cried when stuck on hot planes. <laughs> you can get into that story. Why planes get hot and how to stay cool when they do. You get to pick which. Uh, why is it so freaking cold or hot <laughs> on my plane? Uh can the weather get too hot to fly a plane safely passengers lose it on a hot plane i do like this uh this idea of coming just randomly stumbling upon a subject and then Googling diving it into it and yeah. like all right which, story which are we yeah uh let's do let's go into the why does it get so freaking hot or cold <laughs> yeah because they really don't pick a lane there yeah why is it so freaking hot or cold on this plane AV Geekery is an aviation news site where content is written and edited by its team of professional pilots and aviation geeks. You get to the park, the airport parking lot, run to catch your shuttle, make it through the TSA body cavity search, and then schlep your stuff a thousand yards to the gate. This you guy's board dramatic. And I love he, this. Your, yes. He, it, th- I saw this guy in the movie Plane. He was the guy that was complaining. Uh, after finally sitting down, you notice two things. You're drenched in sweat, and there's almost no air conditioning coming out of the vents. Or if there is air, it is warm. Or perhaps it's July, and you have... Your hands are blue, and they're shivering. So why the heck can the airlines never seem to get the temperature right? How difficult can it be? As it turns out, getting it right is more difficult than you would think. That's not true. That's not true. You're writing an article about how difficult it is. And I th- I think that it must be difficult given that it's always cold or hot in there. I, I don't would, think they're just like fucking with you. <laughs> right. <laughs> like and I would also think that anything that comes with like being on a plane mm-hmm. is difficult. You're flying a giant metal tube through the sky at 35,000 feet mm-hmm. and like most of them don't go down. <laughs> the issue has about 85 moving parts involving both human and mechanical factors. I'd like to go over each aspect of what we have time of what goes <laughs> wrong. But first, let me give you a quick description of the systems in place, which provide heating and cooling above aboard your craft. Heating and cooling at the gate. <laughs> cooling and heating uh, while underway. <laughs> Human factor errors. One of the basic problems concerning complex Just feedback setting systems the temperature wrong. is that the user it's, ah, God, I put 1,000 instead of 10. Ugh. This fucking bozo on the thermostat over here. Tell you what. You know what? Where I do that? Uh, kind of a lot. What? I bet everyone's with me. Font size. Font size? You're yeah. like, oh, shit, this is way too big. Where you'll, it will be like 30. And you're like, you know what? Let's see what 100 looks like. And you click it, but you accidentally clicked all the way on the left. So you're just writing at the beginning of it. So I'll click on the left, do 100, hit enter. Now I'm doing 10,030. <laughs> Pete, it's huge. It's huge, man. And, and because I haven't done the, I haven't uh, altered the spacing. In accordance with it, so they're just running. They're over all just each like, other. It's like oh, they're whoa. bumping uglies, and it's that sentence that uh, I'm. All, this is always in Photoshop. Laura Mipsum. Laura Mipsum. Mm. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's like ah, oh, it's so big. Uh, so all so I've that, learned that same from the, sort of thing. All I've learned from this article so far is that once you get on the plane, you gotta you gotta talk to all the flight attendants. You gotta be like, all right, which one of you fucking bozos is on thermostat duty on this mm. flight? And then you really let them have it and say the pressure's on you. I'm watching you. Well, I wasn't done. Um, okay. 
Operator errors. <laughs> What's uh, the difference between human error and operator error? Usually, the the operator is a human. That's a good cut. Let's dive in. I was going to be past it, but another class of error in temperature control might be classified as operator errors. For instance, on a coolish spring day or a fall day, the grounds crews may simply neglect to connect the air hose, thinking that the temperature outside is cool, so it must be okay inside the airplane. Classic operator You know what they error. say about assumptions. Yeah, they make an ass out of you and me. You didn't think I was actually going to just do yeah, that with the real so, one no. there. Uh, what they don't realize is that several hundred bodies in an aluminum tube will always result in a stuffy cabin even on the coldest day. You know why that is, Pete? It's body temperature. That's right. Read an article for once. I like that they took my exact verbiage of mm. just being like, you're in a fucking aluminum tube. Mm. That's why I like... I always want to complain like when I'm on a plane and the uh and the like the Wi-Fi isn't working and I'm like what the fuck? How do you j- the, it's very easy to get the Wi-Fi up and running. And then I'm like, "Oh shit. I'm uh I'm in an aluminum tube in the sky." The fact that internet's even an option here is crazy. And I was going to continue but but before I do anything else you want to steal from Louis CK? Uh, no, that's a Louis CK bit? Yeah. Is it really? <laughs> yeah, he's like it's a fucking miracle. <laughs> yeah, You're flying. It is. <laughs> and you didn't know that this plane had this two seconds ago. And now you're mad that you don't get the thing that you didn't even know existed five seconds ago. Does he also talk about how like uh, like a hundred years ago people would die trying to make trips? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I bet he does. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I've I don't know if I've heard that before or if it's just it's like in my subconscious or I just like know that that's exactly where Louis C.K. would go with that. No, that's, yeah, that that's, I could see that being, uh, stuff like that is just becomes subconscious canon. Yeah. It's just in there. And we all get that where it's like, who did, uh, who said this or where did I get this? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's an important lesson to, to kind of just keep with you for the rest of your life. What? You're flying an aluminum tube. Oh, shut yeah. the fuck up. If it doesn't crash and burn on a hot plane, it's a miracle. Uh, let's see. Uh, being a commuter, this is my personal pet peeve. We all have a certain, we have a certain set of pilots who mean well, but have their priorities askew. If they're reluctant to start the APU, in conclusion, the heating and cooling systems on jet aircrafts are charged with keeping you comfortable, while the temperature outside the aircraft can range from over 100 degrees to 50 degrees below zero at altitude. They usually do a pretty good job, but have their limits mainly due to human or mechanical error. The best thing you can do to ensure a comfortable ride is to speak up and bring a jacket. What if it's a hot plane? Genius. Yeah. I don't know if I agree with the speaking up thing. No. Don't speak up as little as possible on an airplane. Oh, I was in a situation out to dinner the other night where the bill had a kitchen appreciation uh, fee. and So a tip? Yeah, no. And so like the kitchen appreciation goes to the kitchen and the tip goes to the waiter? Right. So there was confusion and... They were people. I you know what a kitchen appreciation fee is? It means we're or- go- ordering something off the menu that the the kitchen's preparing. Literally, that's what I said. Yeah, I said, that's what it is. I said we showed our. Ki- I said our kitchen appreciation was us walking into this restaurant. Correct. Uh, but I was definitely. I said that to my friends. I didn't say that to. Uh, I, I'm in that case. If you want to screw with me, I'm always going to pay that, and I'm I'm going to pay that, and then I'm going to tip and everything. But uh, and that's re- not to say that like that like service industry and like restaurant uh, industry is not like appreciated enough. Like I'm sure like no they're they're, they're, they're doing the kitchen appreciate the kitchen appreciation fee. My guess would mean that restaurant is choosing to pay their kitchen less and correct hoping that you make up for it, which. It isn't super cool, but if they're getting screwed, I'm always going to to then tip and make up for it. Right. That's why we tip in the first place because, as uh, they discuss in the film Reservoir Dogs, they, they rely on the tips because that's their their pay is such that you factor in. Oh, you'll get tipped on top of that. But uh, there was discussion as to uh, what do we what do we do. What's the 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 math on that? And I was just all in on not speaking up, paying whatever. I I took the longest bathroom break that I told people. I said I do not have to go to the bathroom. I'm walking away from this right now. And other people at the table took turns walking away from it. Was there a bar at this place? I would have been like, I'm gonna go show uh, my 
bar, bar appreciation, appreciation fee. Time. Yeah. Yeah. It was... Uh, Figure this out and let me know how much I owe you. And I, I said, this was really... Everyone got a kick out of it. I said, uh, well, what do I do for the uh, chicken appreciation <laughs> fee? Because I got the chicken. I thought it was great. Yeah, right. So do I have to like pay a fee to the uh, the the farm that, that bred this chicken and shipped it off here? I said, fee. No, no, you misheard me. I said, feed me. Please. <laughs> feed me at this restaurant. Yeah, I, I don't know if I like this, uh, this kitchen appre- appreciation fee thing. I like the 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 podcast topic We've i do riffing yeah. on the on wild things that you could say to people and by the way my, my friend asked so what's the story with this kitchen appreciation fee because the question was does this mean i tip you the server less that doesn't sound right you've been very nice i'd like to give you whatever or what and the uh, server i was only told this because i was long gone in the bathroom okay um I, when I got up, I said, I am going to such the bathroom right now. See you bozos in like 20 minutes. Uh, the server was like, yeah, they, they, I have no idea what that is. Okay. So uh, I don't know. Okay. Very helpful. Yeah. So I believe we, we appreciated the kitchen, though. The food was was good. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, back to the original point. Don't speak up on an airplane. Yeah, don't speak up in any sort of situation. No, well, unless someone's true. being harmed. Yes, yeah, or the plane's like too too hot. If it's like too hot, if, like, if you legitimately think you got a hot plane, like then... if Brody Torrance would be like, "Yo, this is a hot plane." Maybe you can speak up, but like, what would WWBD? What would Brody do? He'd land the plane, and what's the problem okay they, they land there's a bunch of bad guys which also happens in the green inferno so i'm getting these mixed up mm-hmm. green inferno is wild you got to see that movie bro I, I i we've we've talked about it i think that we should do uh eli roth week roth week makes a lot of sense especially right after the oscars like yes when there's no good movies we should do roth week we just really lean into like hey we know there's no good movies so let's watch bad movies on purpose I watched a movie uh, in which Eli Roth acted recently. Have you ever seen Inglorious Bastards? Bastards? I sure have. Crazy film. I had to brush up on my World War II after that. I was a little confused by some of the things that happened. But yeah, uh, the director, the writer and director, Quentin Tarantino, took, took some ar- artistic he took liberties, creative liberties. So I was watching. I said, "Wait, what the heck? I don't. Hey, what the?" <laughs> heck is is with this hey, misinformation is a big problem these days mm-hmm. and quentin tarantino is uh enemy number one eli roth's character in that film is a uh, boston guy e- yes e- from newton uh, or that's that... eli roth oh okay it, all right maybe that was also like a, a jewish thing too because uh, oh, maybe the big Jewish community in Newton, Massachusetts. Right, and he's the Bear Jew, famously. That's the the name of his character. Right, uh, but he he also says that he's Ted Williams. Remember? <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, Teddy Ball Game. He yeah, beats the guy up with a uh, with a, a bat, mm-hmm. and he's hey, time T- Teddy Williams, fucking kid, socks kid, <laughs> your cousin from Boston, and it's the whole thing. I gotta say, uh, God bless him. B J Novick is distractingly bad in that movie. He does not belong in that movie. <laughs> I'm cool with him acting, and like he 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 can act sometimes in certain like he's fine in the founder. Mm-hmm. But what a movie! What a picture! Love the founder. It just makes me want to eat McDonald's. It's that's that's my biggest problem with the founder mm-hmm. is that like its entire message is that like hey McDonald's is kind of like a morally bankrupt or it became a morally bankrupt uh, yeah. establishment and boy ray Kroc did did the boys dirty and i'm just like man but these burgers look good man have you ever seen the flounder no is that a uh the sequel about the mcfish sandwich no it's the pete we're doing a podcast here. <laughs> uh, it's the <laughs> that was the first time i've ever thought to do that definitely want to do that if you joke around no time like, for jokes pete we're on <laughs> Um, Mike is live. The The Flounder is the sequel to The Little Mermaid. It's about Ariel's little buddy, and it's set on a ship. It's uh, but anyway, the, the, a lot the, of ship talk today. The The Plane <laughs> sequel. It's uh, Gaspar is the main character. What? The guy, the prisoner. Yeah? He's the main character in Ship. 
Is it? Yes. Like, really? So, this I, has I, already I, been established? Yeah, I'm telling you. Like, I think oh, this is going to be a good movie. Oh, shit. Hell yeah. That, that was a good well, character. Well, I mean, I'm glad that we're getting some, like, continuation of that story because that just, like, ends. <laughs> it's just, that character just, like, is just stranded on an island with a bunch of money. I do need a little more Goldwyn, though. I hope Goldwyn's back. Same. Yeah. I would love to do a mini podcast series with Tony Goldwyn. To be like, hey, here's what we do. We're going to do, we'll do it in a day. We're going to do, we can do it like, uh, what's a, uh, on cinema style where it's like, we're going to do like five, five minute episodes. We'll do them in a day. Uh, let's just do like a mini series, a little show. Yeah. It's like, you, you know, we call three it? of us, uh, the golden boys. No, that's a good one though. Uh, all the president's men love that. Yeah. And before we do it. We have to make a different miniseries in which you play the president. And when we start off, uh, as I introduce everybody, I'll be like, now, you might be looking at this guy saying, hey, what's a president doing there? He only plays one. It's Pete Blackburn, ladies and gentlemen. He'll be really he'll flustered. Be, he'll be pissed. <laughs> he'll be like, that's my thing. And I'll be like, and. That also sets up the opportunity for you to uh, refer to us as Mr. President and then just have a bunch of confusion as to uh, which Love one you're talking that. to. Love that. Mr. Dyer, <laughs> when I was a kid, I wanted to I got to get yelled at in school a bunch. I was kind of a rebel. I uh, I wanted to name my kid Mr. President because <laughs> I was like, what if they're being a shithead like me and the teacher's always yelling at them? And they're like, Mr. Mr. President. President. And then as I got older, I still kind of like that idea. But I would like make it more specific. So like, I my the teacher would call me and be like, "I hate to do this, but we need to talk about President Barack Obama. <laughs> <laughs> he he is being very rude to everybody. He keeps talking about the Eagles. And I'm like, ah, oh, it's my boy. Hell yes, it's my boy, President Barack <laughs> Obama. Uh, how did you feel about uh, Ben Affleck's Super Bowl commercial? Did it live up to expectations? Did you see the outtakes? I did not. I like the outtakes better. I like the commercial. It wasn't my it favorite was fine. commercial. It was like it was. I mean, that that commercial's been done a million times. Where, oh, this person's the, behind right. the. But you know what? It hasn't been done with Ben Affleck. So fuck you. That's true. Yeah, it, it was. I was expecting like a little bit more creativity rather than it just being like kind of like a hidden camera. Ben Affleck's work in the drive-through kind of deal. Yeah, they 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 knocked this out very quickly. Yeah, for sure. And uh, did not break. A sweat. I did. I did appreciate the the J Lo cameo. I think that that kind of made it. So I thought. It was like 50-50 she'd be in it because she was there. Well, she was there. I knew she yeah. was there, yeah. Um I but, liked I I I would have thought there would be some they'd get some better stuff out of it. Like how do you not have a scene in there where he's just carrying a bunch of the 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 Dunkin' Donut supplies? Right. Where he, where he says, "Hey, drive up. We got to there's a lines backed up. You got to drive up and park." Yeah. The drive through heads. No. This happens all the time. And then he brings it They'll out. Run and out drive. your order. Yeah. Yeah. Like, but, uh, come on. We could have written a better fucking Dunkin' Donuts commercial than that. We I mean, we would have written the best Dunkin' Donuts yeah. commercial for sure. But it, it, they didn't really they didn't really take any big swings there. We should write a Ben Affleck commercial and do uh, it, it, at some point. This will see the light of day. But there is a uh, thing that uh, we're making. And we do have some of the elements of it where we're spiting somebody who will not be in something, so we recast them using other actors. Mm -hmm. We could do that sort of thing with Ben Affleck. We're, yeah, and I mean, we're we're uh, we get Eli Roth. <laughs> yeah, yes. You think Eli Rod Eli Roth would do the podcast if we told him we were doing Roth Week? I think that he would. I don't know. I'd be really happy if he did because he seems like an interesting guy. He's a Boston guy. Yeah. He. Uh, he, I feel like we could uh, we could uh, butter him up enough to get him to get him on the show. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I wanted to mention was we're not uh, we're not typically big script guys, hmm. but we're we're working on we're working on scripted some, materials some coming. Scripted material, and I think it's going to be very funny. Uh, it's the best. It's something that we've had on our mind for a little bit, and we came up with an idea doing breakfast. If you if you're subscribed to the Patreon. You'll know that we uh, we went to breakfast this weekend, and at breakfast, we came up with a banger of an idea, and I believe the plan is to have it next week executed next week. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and we still do have the uh, Your Honor stuff coming because Your Honor, I texted you the other night. Don't let me, don't let us get too far away from the Affleck thing because I want to talk about the outtakes. But I texted you the other night 
while walking through the streets of Boston. And I said, hey, this is weird, but I feel like you are going to agree. I think I'm catching feelings for your honor. And we'd already seen your honor. We'd podcast about it for the week and everything. But like, clearly we like, we like, like your honor. Mm -hmm. This isn't like the, this isn't. We're we're not being flirty with your honor. We're not like oh you're, you're, your honor is stupid blah blah. Like we're like pretty into your honor right now. I'll be I'll be straight with you. Um, once when your honor was coming back before the season started, it it felt more like an obligation Same. to cover your like, honor we season have to two. Do it. Like how can we not? Like yeah. we were the biggest your honor guys season one. So how do we not watch season two? Like I don't think that we were particularly psyched for it yeah we didn't have many expectations at all but i'll tell you i i'm also catching feelings a hundred percent like i don't think it's a particularly great show but it is i think it's a good show and i think that it's getting better like yeah. it, it's bet it has it's better at this point in season two than it was in season one. Ding, 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 ding. That's a thing, man. I went back and I started to, I rewatched uh, season one because, you know, you, I'll, I'll rewatch Breaking Bad to see when Cranston becomes Heisenberg. Mm -hmm. I kind of went back and rewatched Your Honor to see when Cranston became the Joker. <laughs> just like when it becomes like well this is the stupidest shit in the world and i forgot i was texting you as i was watching the first couple episodes i was like oh right this show started like really good yeah and you're like we're we're probably doing episodes like damn can't wait for your honor this week what are they gonna do now this is like it was so gripping very captivating and then i mean adam becomes the joker a lot of people just become the joker yeah 100%. and uh and like, uh, I mean, it, it's easy to forget where you came from in the show, as we mentioned uh, in, I think, last week's Your Honor recap, mm -hmm. and you would, like had forgotten how this, the, the even all of this sequence of events got started. Yeah, and uh, it's easy to forget where where we came from here, especially now because, like, in, early in season one, you had two powerhouse characters with like a lot of a lot of uh, like balls on them. Yeah, and they had, they were big in stature and big in the community, and now they're just like two shell they're, they're shells of a men yeah and uh in season two and so it's a big change man yeah i mean, I mean as season one went on once the trial of rocco starts which i i will just say if you can't go back and rewatch all of season one watch the final couple of episodes if you really want to get like the full ridiculous your honor experience all the more tyranny stuff it just, uh, carlo being truly the worst person in the world the worst at defendant. having at having a case thrown in their favor fucking everything up just ridiculous stuff and i also forgot the little stuff that we'd laugh at like they have like a party for adam and because he got into college and like Costello's there. Yeah, right. Like, yeah. There's why is the, there no randomly people a detective his age. that's not friends with anybody there? Just literally his dad, all his dad's friend and friends and then Adam. And then like 20 minutes later in that same episode, they're like, uh, their COVID is really, really spreading throughout the city, and you can't have anybody in the uh, the courtroom. And it's like, motherfucker, you just had a party of twelve for dinner. I think that in season one, Costello had like a games played bonus that she was really close to hitting. So they were like, all right, we'll get you. And they they were just like putting her in every scene. And in season two, so many times we've been like. It would make sense for the cop to be there for the scene. Oh, <laughs> right. where's Costello? And they're like, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, instead <laughs> instead they introduce a new cop and give all the scenes to her. Yeah. But it's good right now, man. Like, it, it, it took a twist at the end of the last episode that is such a humdinger and something that we'd never really considered but probably should have with all the crazy things that happen. Man, I'm, I'm excited for it. It's what, probably the second half of season two but you're totally right at this point in season one we're like oh well this show's doing the showtime thing and just getting stupid and being weird yeah. but maybe it's because we're used to the weirdness so we allow for more dumb shit but i love where your honor is right now shout out carmine conti just uh 
quit quit eating on camera. Yeah, for sure. It it hasn't fully gotten away from the from the like the stupid stuff and like the ridiculous shit that makes your honor your honor. So it feels like it's in a good place with uh with like kind of feeding both hands where it's a it's a good show and it's enjoyable and I'm like invested in all the storylines except for one uh and then uh it's has some ridiculousness that you're like oh there we go that's what I like to see and they're letting Isaiah Whitlock let him cook shine a little bit <laughs> let him cook finally they let him be like what the fuck did you just say? Jesus fucking Christ. God damn, with this show. And you're like, ah, don't 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 don't, don't talk about the show. <laughs> right. Be mad at the characters. God damn, are you serious, Michael? God, this stupid fucking character. I mean, my stupid friend. We uh, should we should start handing out the Let Him Cook Award for every Your Honor episode, like we did with um yeah. the Ted Lasso Award for every episode of Dawson's Creek. Yeah. Um the, the Let Him Cook Award is like a Somebody who just is like, let's see where he goes with this. I think that we would find, we'd be like, damn, we forgot. This is a bloodbath. Hope Davis has won <laughs> every week because although there were some really good performances, would it, would then it in the last a- couple of minutes, Gina came in and uh, decided to have everybody murdered. I don't know, though. Who who would your uh, Let Him Cook Award go to in the last episode? Last episode? I mean, uh, uh, Dark Horse, Rosie Perez. Yes. Yeah. Bestie kind of cook. Yeah, right. I mean introducing that big twist at the end was all like essentially all her doing yeah and if there's not a let him cook moment for that then what what is there one for i'll tell although you although i might i might also throw uh carlo in the running mm. for lightly suggesting that they murder their parents yeah that's I'll, a real let him cook <laughs> i'll tell you what cranston this season is nicholas holt no cook no cooking. He can't cook. He can't cook. <laughs> he can't, that guy has not cooked once. Not only he he's not even eaten. Yeah. He he is not cooking or eaten. Well, then he's definitely not Nicholas Holt. Because Nicholas Holt famously eats. I like I I'm I, I'm so fascinated by the menu's place in society right now. I don't get it. I But I love that I love that even though like we've we've I like people last, getting like, ups, uh, five getting episodes excited in a row about we've been like it's so weird that people like the menu. Yet when I needed to make a cooking reference, top of mind was Nicholas Holt's character. You really have referenced the menu a lot in the past, like, four months. It's, well, it, that's because I'm just trying to fit in with people. <laughs> All they talk about is it's, the menu. It, ha- it it definitely has, like, one of the wildest lifespans of a movie that I can It's the Harambe. It's the yeah. Harambe of movies yeah. where it happened. People were like, huh. But Harambe damn. was good. A couple weeks later, <laughs> Harambe, yeah. Anyway. Uh, in the Dunkin' Donuts uh, commercial, the outtakes, one of them, Ben Affleck says, "No, so, uh, sorry, we don't, uh, we don't have coffee." <sighs> the guy's like, "No coffee." He's like, "Out of coffee and donuts." And the guy goes, "What do you have?" <laughs> uh, water. <laughs> That should have been in there. That should have been. In but there. I, I bet, I, I, I bet Dunkin' Donuts it was really like, like, "We don't want to be like we don't have coffee." I've been to Dunks before where there's been no coffee. That seems like an egregious oversight. It was because it was actually because they had a water issue. They were <laughs> Very like, ironic. So we didn't have, have coffee or water. They're like, we have bottled Powerade. You want that? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah. Do you have donuts? And they were like, no. Uh, I, I had a, a lot of a lot of Dunks in my mentions this week because I had uh, tweeted about. I put out the, the the proclamation that Chipotle is essentially the most inconsistent chain restaurant in the world. Mm-hmm. Because if you go to like 12 different Chipotles and order the, the same burrito tw- each time, you're going to get like 10 different burritos. Yeah. It's a different thing every time based on like who's preparing it, uh, just like the however much shit that they have in the bins at that time like you're never getting the same burrito at chipotle and i tweeted that out and people were like it's, it's like the dunks of of uh of like chain restaurants they were they were saying like right up there with dunks and i've never really had a problem with dunks consistency maybe with the coffee but like if i'm going to dunks i'm usually getting something black or like just yeah. like light cream and it it never is like what the fuck is this? I've been to Dunks a million times, and it's been very rare that I've been like, ooh, they messed up this drink or whatever. Sometimes you order something, and you're like, damn, I didn't know that was a sugary thing. 
that's on you. It could be like a fancy schools. thing. Like if you're going to Dunks and you're ordering something fancy, they I feel like there's a better opportunity that for them to like chunk it. Mm. Whereas Starbucks is more about like those those artisan drinks or like the barista drinks. Whereas like Dunkin' Donuts is like fucking take your coffee and leave. You know what I've noticed the last like year or so? For years I have said stuff I've said don't be a star or do whatever you want. But if you're paying more for Starbucks than Dunks because you think Starbucks is that much better, maybe you should save the money and just get Dunks because it's similar quality. And the difference is that Starbucks burns their beans. We've mm-hmm. talked about this on the podcast yeah. before. But when I talk when I over the years when I would say to people in the wild, they'd say, What are you talking about? They don't burn their beans. Where's where'd you get this burn their beans thing? And one of my my buddies is a coffee guy. He told me that and I was like, huh, whatever. Over like the last year or so, I've seen a lot more instances of people mentioning Starbucks isn't that good. They just burn their beans. That's the reason it tastes different. So don't fall for the big Starbucks thing. I don't don't, say it's so bad. It's not. It's whatever. Like if you like Starbucks, you like Starbucks. Get get your Starbucks. But like what you're tasting, what you're tasting, maybe it's a taste that you've acquired. But that's not like a quality that you're tasting. That's that they're making a choice. But maybe it it is different. Maybe yeah, it's a stylistic choice. And if it tastes good, then it tastes good. And they they, who say that they're doing something wrong? It's a combination like marketing. I I like my pizza a little bit burnt. Everybody likes their pizza a little bit. No, they don't, which is crazy. What? Yeah. I know people that like like it doughy. Everybody likes their pizza on the thinner side, crispy. I would agree, but like it, that's not true. Really? Yeah. People want the big I like people like, like the, big the chewy the fluffy. Yeah. Like, Dave Portnoy would call it football pizza. No, I think that's just like a different style. Like where it's like a like a lighter, more traditional style pizza. That's what he calls football pizza. Oh, I thought that he meant like the like you go to a shitty pizza place. No, and, okay. No, yeah, he just means like a thing that you can eat like a lot of and like and just kind of tastes like a traditional pizza. Okay. Here's a weird request for um for the listeners here. I had something pop up last night um where I had a real like um Sinbad Shazam K- Kazam movie Shazam Kazam. Which one is the one with Shaq? Uh, Kazam. So Shazam with Sinbad is like the fake genie movie that everybody thinks that they remember. I had one of those situations where I could have sworn I watched a show in which George Went, Norm from Cheers, meets a couple of people in a hallway at like a TV studio and they have like a conversation and he's being polite at first and the person who's like visiting is like just really excited to be meeting George Went and eventually like overstays his welcome and George Went turns into an asshole and he's like, all right, enough. I I don't want to talk to you anymore. And then like walks off. Uh, I like distinctly remember that. And I thought that it was in Curb Your Enthusiasm, but it was either not Curb Your Enthusiasm or it was not George Went. Yeah. Did you look up... uh George Wentz IMDb? I did. And I didn't didn't see anything that struck me as like, oh, yeah, it was this. So if anybody knows what I'm talking about, it's a real shot in the dark. I realize that. But like if anybody knows what I'm talking about, please put my brain at ease because I'm it's bothering the hell out of me that I can't remember what this is from. You don't think my response was helpful? You said, no, I, I know that... Uh, Woody Harrelson and but Ted Danson and Ted Danson is in Curb Your Enthusiasm. You might be thinking of Ted Danson. He was in an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. He was in a few. He was several. Really? Yeah. Famously, he did more than one. Famously, huh? Ooga Ooga with uh, with um, Cheryl. Cheryl, yes. That was the only episode that he's in. Yeah. Where she says, "I've broken up with you, and now I'm dating Ted Danson." Yeah. Now, first she dates the guy who makes the no fly underwear. <laughs> And then there's uh, Woody Harrelson, who um, is a uh, gr- what's his uh, deal? He's like a grocery. There's something about grocery where like he doesn't he 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 ends up doing something with a uh, there's like a racist guy. Yeah, which right. That's like yeah, forty five percent of yeah. Curb Your Enthusiasm episodes. There's the, the some him and uh, him and uh, Woody Harrelson connect on something. Uh, Larry David and Woody, uh, they like we're in a fight, but then they realize that they have like a similar quality. And they they really bond over that. What is your favorite Ted Danson role? 
Um, I mean, it's got it from I, I'm on I'm on a Cheers kick. It's got to be Sam Malone, hmm. even though Sam Malone is like an extremely problematic character. Really? <laughs> yeah. I uh, he's just I, the horniest guy who just oh, yeah, constantly yeah. sexually harasses the people that he works with, and is like clearly a sex addict. <laughs> wow. Uh, mine is I loved Becker, but my favorite Ted Danson. Oh, I never watched Becker. Becker's the best. Really? Oh my god! I've never watched Becker. Watch I, it. We should have Becker Week. <laughs> I uh, were you ever a Frasier guy? No. So they're rebooting Frasier. Yeah. With Kelsey Grammer, and it's taking place in Boston. Mm. And like, I love I love the Frasier character in Cheers. I'm definitely gonna go watch Frasier after I'm done with Cheers. Mm. And I know a lot of people love Frasier, but like, I'm interested to see what Frasier becomes. Like, they should really just reboot Cheers. Having old ass Ted Danson, George Went, and Christy Alley, and, yeah. Sh- Shelly Long's still alive. Okay. Uh, and then uh, John Ratzenberger, who I just saw in Poker Face this week ah. and made me so happy to see him. Like, and uh, oh, what's uh, shit? Um, uh, fuck. Uh, what's what's her name? She's married to Danny DeVito. Jennifer she, Love Hewitt. <laughs> yeah, what a couple that would be. <laughs> no, um, Carla from from Cheers. Oh, uh, I forget so from Scrubs. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, but yeah, they're they're all alive except for Kirstie Alley. So hmm. and Coach. My uh, coach my, famously didn't make it too deep. My favorite Ted Danson role is uh, "You Got Served." In Cheers, because he serves drinks. No, because he's dancing. <laughs>